Hi guys, welcome back. So last time we talked a little about a little bit about ancient Egypt and then we started our cartouche. Before we continue, I wanted to go over some information and then give you some new information that we needed to know today. So since we're talking about Egypt, can anybody please raise their hand and also tell us what continent Egypt is found? So, I hope that somebody answered the question and told us that Egypt is found in Africa. That's the continent where you can find the country of Egypt. So, the Egyptian temples, the pyramids that we all know about, are on the Nile. So, the Nile is the longest river in Africa, and you can see it kind of looks like a flower. The ancient Egyptian used a language called hieroglyphics, in which they used to write. Take a look at these hieroglyphics here, and if someone could please share with the class, how is hieroglyphics different from the English that we use? I hope that someone could tell the difference and told us that hieroglyphics look a little bit more like pictures when we have a lot of letters in our language. What makes ancient Egypt interesting? is that they had, instead of kings and queens, they had what was called pharaohs. Pharaohs, or other very important people in ancient Egypt, would have something called a cartouche. So a cartouche was an oval-shaped nameplate. They would have their name in hieroglyphics on the cartouche. A cartouche could be read up and down, or it could be read from left to right. The cool thing about the cartouche is that everyone's would look a little different. Although the ancient Egyptians have obviously died out, we can still find some of their oldest temples in Egypt. Today, Egyptians live in cities just like us. There is one pharaoh that I would like you to know. His name was Pharaoh Tutankhamun and he is called the Boy King because he started ruling over the entire Egyptian Nile when he was nine years old. Almost 100 years ago, King Tut's tomb, or where the Egyptians buried their kings and queens, was found. On your note card with your pencil, I want you to go ahead and write your name so I'm gonna write Mr. Boatfield at the top, and we are going to do a little bit of a simple writing, and I wanna see what you thought was in King Tut's tomb when they opened it, and then I'll tell you. So I have my name, I'm gonna go ahead and put my class code right nearby. I will write your class code on the board for you, so you won't put CC number, you'll put the class code. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video so that you can put it. Awesome. So, with the text right here, I want you to write, it just has to be a sentence, it doesn't have to be real long, what you think was inside King Tut's tomb. Before you start, I want you to talk to a friend. Talk to a friend, what do you think King Tut put in his tomb? Because remember, he died, and then before he died, he told people that what he wanted inside his tomb. So what do you think the Pharaoh wanted to have when he went to the afterlife? Here's what I put. I think he probably wanted a big door to his tomb because in my mind, if I am the Pharaoh and I'm ruling over my kingdom and I die, I don't want people entering my tomb. I want to keep it safe and private. I don't want anyone just kind of walking in and doing what they want. I want to keep it very safe. So I'm going to put a big door. That's what I think. So go ahead at this time, write down what you think. Then give me maybe a lazy thumbs up on the table to show me that you're ready. Okay, let's find out what he really had in the tomb. They found King Tut buried in a sarcophagus. So a sarcophagus is basically the coffin that pharaohs use. But as you can see, it is very flashy. There is a lot of gold. And you'll notice that there's two in this picture. They were actually inside of each other. So they would put the smaller sarcophagus inside the bigger sarcophagus and there would be basically so many different layers to this sarcophagus that you'd have to just keep opening coffins to find him. 
And of course they found chests full of treasures. They also found his throne, which was kind of like the Pharaoh's chair that they ruled over. And it was made entirely of gold. Okay, so you can leave this note card on your table. I will pick this up and take a look at it later. We should have also picked up a placemat, paintbrush, and paper towel. Your pendants for your necklace that we're creating should be on the middle table. I will have y'all, um, or I will dismiss y'all to go ahead and get those once I pause the video, which I will do right now. So today we're gonna be adding a little bit of paint to this. Now I will be calling y'all up by table colors to come up and get one of these. This will be for the paint that we're using. There are two sides, so we're actually gonna be sharing. Each person can have up to three colors and we are going to be sharing this. So you'll have to sit by someone and one side will be yours, one side will be theirs. So you'll get to choose one metallic color so remember the Egyptians really like gold. They were just gaudy like that. They just loved being fabulous, I guess. We're gonna choose one metallic color and then you can choose up to one or two more non-metallic colors. So think like black or brown. I'm going to choose this classic gold and then I'm gonna get a blackout and I will squeeze a little bit for myself. So I'm only gonna give each person just a little bit. I only need two colors for mine. I just really wanted gold and black. That's really all I wanted. Um, remember, you're going to be sharing with someone. I'm going to go ahead and start painting. You can paint anywhere you want. You can paint the sides, you can paint on the front, but from my experience, it is not a good idea to paint the back, the one that has your initials on it. Could someone raise their hand and tell me why that wouldn't be the best decision? Okay. I hope someone raised their hand and told us it's not a good idea to paint the back because if you paint the back and then turn it right back over, it will get stuck to the paper. So when you're doing your colors, here's my uh, suggestion for you. I would s start with the metallic first. The way I'm gonna do this, and you can do yours differently, I'm gonna put my metallic all over it, um, except for the back, so I'm gonna, even gonna go for the sides too. And then I'm gonna wait a little while, just wait a couple minutes for it to dry a little bit, and then start with the black. So I'm gonna do metallic first, and then other colors. So as I'm painting, I notice I'm having a couple issues. The first issue is that when I'm painting over the part that we kind of dug out with the needle, I'm noticing that none of the paint is getting in those little trenches and tunnels that we made with the needle. Uh, to do this, guys, we're gonna have to take the paint and you're gonna have to get real nosy with it. You're gonna have to stick the bristles in between those valleys and kind of fill them up. It looks a little bit neater that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just take your time. Don't be afraid to really slow down and kind of give it some more craftsmanship. I enjoy these a lot better when I see that you went back and kind of fixed these things because you made the time to do it. Okay guys, so I'm still going back and I'm fixing most of those little problem areas it's a little bit tricky, but just take your time and fix them. But here's problem number two. I'm noticing that some areas, like this area, the gold I can see really well. And then some areas over here, I can still see through the paint, and I can still see that white clay underneath, and I don't like that. So while this is drying, I am gonna go back and add another small layer of gold paint. That will help cover that up and make it look a little bit more, um, a little bit more craftsmanship like. So I'm just gonna take my time and I'm gonna go back. It may take a couple minutes just for it to, to dry and then you can add another layer, but I think it's worth it if you just take your time. Okay, that's starting to look super good, super flashy. I like it, I like it. So now I'm done with the gold and like I said, you didn't need a whole lot, so I'm not gonna give you a whole lot. I need to use the black now, but I still have gold paint on my brush. It is super important, guys, that you take it and give it a little bath in the water that I should have put, in on, put, uh, put on the tables. Oh my gosh, I can't talk today. And then make sure that you dry off on a paper towel. That's what it's for. And then you can go in and get your second color. And I'm going to put my second color here. And then I also think I'm gonna put it on the sides just to be creative.
once you are done, just put the paintbrush in the water cup. That way it doesn't dry out. You can throw away the paper towels. We don't need this anymore. Then what you're gonna do is you are going to wash this out. I will show you how to do that. So when you clean these out, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the sink. You're gonna find these big paint brushes kind of hanging out there. Turn on the water a little bit. Very, very soft water. It doesn't need to be crazy water. Don't just do soft water. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the palette up to the water, take the paintbrush, and basically paint the paint away with the water. So that's how it works. I know that's weird, but it works really fast. You're gonna paint the paint away. So just spend a few seconds painting. It doesn't take long at all. If you see any spots, please get those. And then obviously turn off the water. You can leave this by the sink and then give this a couple shakes and then leave on the counter for me. Then once everyone's done using it, we're going to take the water cup, follow the what on the floor, I hope you said green arrows, and then all you do is you just place it in the sink and I will clean it later. Leave your cartouche on the table, maybe just move it away, leave the placemat there so it doesn't, you know, get hurt by someone else. You have any of these activities to choose from. I have whiteboards, free draw paper, notebook paper, and coloring sheets. It looks crazy right now because kindergarten just came in. Okay, guys, I think that y'all are going to do a great job on your cartouches. I think that you can even make it more creative than mine. I hope that y'all have an amazing day.